back to today's Bible study. We are in John the ninth chapter, John 9, 35, through chapter 10 and verse 18. This is the Bible reading for June the 5th. And I want to focus on something today that um, is very important. It, it may seem a little bit controversial, but it is a very important doctrine that we need to understand if, if we're to understand the fullness of Revelation. Um, if you read the end of John 9, you'll see it's the end of Jesus speaking, of the, speaking to the blind man, uh, the man he had healed, and the situation that ended there. And then uh, he begins to speak with some Pharisees. And in chapter 10, he is speaking to the Pharisees about his sheep, him knowing his sheep, and his sheep knowing him. And he's talking to them um, about the relationship that he has with his people and how they are not his people. They are not believers. They are not of his sheep. And the part I wanted to focus on begins in verse 14. And um, I'll just begin reading in verse 14. Jesus said in verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own knows me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, the reason why I say this doctrine, or what this is teaching, uh, is is actually a part of the overall doctrine that we call uh, in systematic theology, we call the doctrine limited atonement. And that is a very, uh, I, I think, a, a, um, a negative way of, of making an important truth. Limited atonement basically is this. Christ died and his blood, his death, his sacrifice is so powerful and so awesome that his sacrifice is powerful enough to save anyone from their sins. However, he didn't die for just anyone. He died for his sheep. He died for his people. He died for those who, under the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit, would believe in him. Christ's death was not like... Um, as Dr. James White talks about spreading peanut butter and just hoping it, hoping it sticks, Christ's death was specifically made for the sheep. It was specifically made um, for believers, for those who would believe on Jesus Christ. He said, I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, we have to understand again by saying we have a limited atonement, we are not limiting Christ's atonement in its power, heaven forbid. What we are limiting it is in its scope. We believe that Jesus died particularly. That's why I don't like the term limited atonement. I like the term particular redemption. Christ died and his, the power in his sacrifice, again, is immeasurable and it's infinite. Yet at the same time, it was very specific. He died for his sheep. He died for those who would believe. Um, one of the things I hear very commonly taught is um, Jesus died for everyone. Jesus died for everyone. And, they'll, and, and people will say that and they'll say that and they'll say that. And it becomes a mantra. Jesus died for everyone. Jesus died for everyone. The problem with that, though, is if Jesus died for everyone specifically and particularly in a redemptive way, sense, then no one would go to hell. Uh, I remember having this conversation with a, <clears throat> a man in line at a Bible bookstore. He said, uh, we were talking about the doctrines of grace, and the man said, uh, you know what I hate? He said, I, talking about systematic theology and the doctrines of grace, I hate limited atonement. I said, well, you believe in hell, don't you? And he said, well, yeah, I believe in hell. I said, then you believe there are some people who the atonement of Christ will not be applied to. 
because if Christ's redemption, if Christ's propitiation, if Christ's atonement applies to every person individually, then nobody, get, nobody has to go to hell because that means nobody's going to be paying for their sins. What he really had a problem with, he didn't really have a problem with particular redemption or with limited atonement. What he had a problem with was unconditional election. That's a different doctrine that's dealt with in different passages such as uh, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 9, Ephesians 1 and 2 and places like that. So what we have to understand very clearly from this passage is that Jesus makes one thing adamant, one thing absolutely crystal clear. He laid down his life with a sacrifice that's power is immeasurable. But that sacrifice was made particularly for those who would believe on his name. So I would call out to everyone uh, who, is, who is watching this. Um, maybe you're sitting there and you're wondering, you know, I don't know if I've ever believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and, 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 and was his sacrifice for me. Well, this is, this is the thing. If we have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, if we have been born again uh, by grace and uh, been given the gift of faith, then we are of his sheep. We have heard his word and his word by the power of the Holy Spirit has changed our hearts. And we can, we can say with confidence um, that we are of his sheep. And that's what I would encourage you to do today. Seek out your heart. Search your heart. Um, as the scriptures say, make your calling and election sure. Look at yourself and your life. Are you living for Christ? Um, remember, salvation is more than just that one time signing a card or going forward or saying a prayer or being immersed. Um, salvation is, is daily uh, reaffirmation of the hope that is within us. It's a daily uh, living out that that changed life, the regenerated life, the lordship of Christ must be evident in our lives uh, if we are to claim the salvation that comes in Christ and to say that we are truly his sheep. I want to end with a quick announcement. This weekend I have a very special um, weekend update. It's going to be dealing again with the subject of false teachers. I did a video earlier in the week on a, on a false teacher named Todd Bentley, and 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 my YouTube, uh, I got more attention on that than any video I'd ever done, and um, so it's apparent that, that that you guys who are watching this are interested in, in the false teachings that are going on this weekend. I'm going to be doing a demonstration on video of how some um, techniques some of the techniques that are used by these false teachers to bring about the euphoria and the feelings of euphoria that are often seen in these meetings. Uh, so keep your eye out for that video. You don't want to miss it. And again, don't forget right below me is a comment box. Please, please comment on the videos and let me know that they're uh, giving you inspiration for the day. And um, if you have any questions, especially on the doctrines that we talked about today, please shoot me an email, mkfosky at yahoo.com. God be with you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope that it's a day that glorifies God and that we all seek to live days like that all the days of our lives.